Okay, so what we have here are two older processors that I still have around. Uh, the Digitech, just because it's a totally different beast than most stuff out there, and it'd be nice to see Digitech come make a comeback, because they had some really fantastic stuff in the 90s. I've had some of their rack gear, it was really good, and this is kind of one of their, I guess you could say it was their 2012, but it's in a box on the floor. <laughs> um, even the button layout's almost identical to the rack mount. So these were really popular units. Uh, they have a tube, an actual 12AX7 inside. So you get a pretty warm, with some tweaking, you get some pretty warm distortion sounds. This is the old diehard Boss M50 that just won't die. And anybody that owns one, really kind of want to hang on to them because it's a whole collection of Boss stuff in one box and you save a ton of money by just getting the one box, which is why people buy these things in the first place. You know, why spend $4,000 on a pedal board when you can spend $400 and get most of that stuff that you can't afford in the box. So these came out, I think both of these came out in the 90s. The ME50 is a very old unit. Uh, they also have a base unit, M50, uh, ME50. And I actually plan them finding one used and picking it up one of these days because I also play bass and I really like this unit. It's just a pinch hitter. It just doesn't fail. Um, the thing about these older units that the younger guys um, are not realizing is these don't work real great with a four cable method. Um, they're not designed to be placed in the effects loop of a guitar amp. Most guitar amps didn't even have effects loops when these things were developed. Um, these were some of the first ones, well there was a whole line of Digitex and bosses before these, but they're designed to put everything in a compact box at your feet, in front of your amplifier. So your guitar plugs directly into these the output of these can go to one or two amplifiers. Both of these have stereo outputs, and they both have stereo effects. So you can do cool panning delays and things like that, and nice sounding choruses. <coughs> but they're designed to be in front of your amplifier, not in the loop. That's the design. That doesn't mean you can't put them in the loop. In my humble opinion and experience, they don't sound as good in the loop. And part of that doesn't make sense, because well, wasn't this just a collection of stomp boxes that you'd put in the loop on a pedal board anyway? Mostly yes. <laughs> but some of these things you want in front of your amp and some behind the amp. Um, <clears throat> and these units don't have a way of splitting that signal up so that your time-based delays and things and reverbs can go into the effects loop. These just simply guitar goes in, guitar signal comes out, plugs into the front of the amp. That's what these are designed to do. Now, if you want to cheat and try to put it in your effects loop, you could do a what you would have to call a three cable method, where your guitar goes into these, and then it comes out, or your guitar would plug into your amplifier, and then your effects loop would come out of the amp into the input of, say, the RP20 here, come out the mono, unless you have a stereo effects return, like a jazz chorus has, and you run it back into your head. Now, you can do that. It will work. Will it sound good? Your, your mileage may vary, and your experience with tweaking EQ and things like that will vary. But you've got to remember, if it sounds like crap, it's not the unit sounding like crap because it's a crappy unit. It's because you're not using it as it was designed. These units are designed to be in front. Simple as that. If you want your effects to be, you know, your chorus and delays and reverse to be in your loop, the best thing to do is to go with separate pedals and put them in your amp's loop. But don't put the whole entire unit in the loop because it's just simply not designed to be there. That's the simple truth of the matter. Nowadays, everybody's gotten used to the four cable method. 
and I'm sure there are people out there that think you can take any device and apply the four cable method. The four me that, that method requires that the unit you're using has outputs for an effects loop on the unit. The unit needs an effects loop as well as your amplifier. It's the only way the four cable method will work. Older units do not carry those. They started to bring them about, you know, around 2000, everything started to explode into the four cable method. So that's all I was wanting to bring out is that if you do find these older units, don't expect them to perform very well in the effects loop. You can go ahead and prove me wrong on that, <laughs> but you won't be doing it with the four cable method. And that's my point of the video. Units that are old, designed to be in front of your amplifier, should be placed there and you should tweak it until it sounds good. You need to take the time to make these sound good. And that's my lesson for today on older gear. And I've always had a lot of older gear. I also have the more modern gear. But these hang around, they've got their fine points. There are great clean tones on the RP series from Digitech. And Boss, I don't even need to mention Boss. We all know Boss. It's great stuff. So I hope you found the video helpful. Um, if you're thinking about getting into vintage gear, it's hard to think of this stuff as vintage already. But it's, it is. It's vintage. So I thank you for watching. I hope you appreciate the time. And remember to subscribe and like the video. I'd love to hit. 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Right now I'm heading for 8,000. So I'd be really happy to hit 8,000. <laughs> so help me out. Click that subscribe button, folks. Thank you very much. Have a good day now. Thanks for watching.